I've Xeroxed these plans so many times that they're starting to get a little fuzzy, but I have them memorized. These figures here are the thicknesses, too, of the wood in millimeters. It's cool, you ought to see it in the morning when the winter light comes in here. So every morning there'll be about 20 minutes of learning how to play. You don't have to know anything about that at all. You don't have to have made any other musical instruments before. Uh, you just have to come and you have to call me and make an appointment to come over here anytime from 9 to 3 on Tuesday and Wednesday. 9 to 3. I'll be in here practically all the time, but you have to come here to fill out an application and meet me and talk about the goals of the program so that you know what you're getting into because it's going to take four semesters. And that's more than students usually commit themselves to, but they're going to walk away with a very valuable violin and a knowledge of how to do something practical as well as artistic. And it'll probably um, change some of their lives. We'll play. We'll play simple folk melodies. The legislature is going to give me some money for violins for the students to play until they make their own. And they'll learn. I'll teach them tunes, basic tunes. And other people will teach them tunes, too. We have people around here who know some of the Matachinas tunes and some of the old Hispanic fiddle tunes. I know the Anglo tunes. And makers from all over the world we're going to come here and give lectures and give talks. Plus, Don Robertson's staff from his violin shop here in town will come and give lectures too to the students. The class will take uh, two years, three credits for each of four semesters. So it's a total of 12 credits. One will be the Guarneri violin, which is this form, and one will be the Messiah Stradivarius, which is this form. So they'll start by making forms, and then they will make templates like these. I'll hold scroll templates. This is made out of metal. And this is how you get ready to carve the scroll of the violin. So they'll have to make that. They won't have to make any of their tools except maybe their scrapers. They're going to have to learn how to sharpen tools. They're going to have to learn how to use hand tools, which they may have never done before, but I can teach them that. That's why it's going to take two years. Uh, I will buy uh, sets of planes for them like this. They're called finger planes. And they uh, are used like this. We use arching guides to show us the arch of the violin. Um, I usually use arching guides. I don't always. Sometimes I just do it by eye. And th this is the back. This is a piece of curly maple. I'm still going to go to the Pecos Wilderness and cut down trees that have been killed in the forest fire that they had there in 2000, 2001. The F holes are cut by using a knife. I'll buy all the students' knives like this. These are 25 millimeter knives from Germany and you can shave with them. Very, very close in all the details that are on the diagram. It's all handmade. We do use bandsaws to cut the wood out roughly and then after that we use knives and chisels and files. Scroll is hand carved with those gouges that I just showed you. And every student, every one of the eight students will end up with a violin that looks something like this. It, this is a cultural revitalization project. It, it, in some cases, there are very, very few older Hispanic people who still play the old dance tunes. So while we've done some research on it, uh, it is a dying form of folk art, folk dance, folk life. And I want to try to uh, restore that.